Hello everybody. In the previous section, we studied real roots of homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. At this section, we are going to study complex roots. Let's start with the example y double prime plus 4y prime plus 7y equals to 0 with y of 0 is equal to 0 and y prime of 0 equals to 3. We need at least two initial conditions. Before we start, let's remember homogeneous equation is in the form of a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals to 0. And if we convert this into characteristic equation, we obtain some quadratic function. And if we solve for the roots of this quadratic function, we obtain two complex roots. And these complex roots are in the form of e to the lambda plus mu i of t and lambda negative mu i t. Here, lambda and mu are the real and imaginary parts of the roots. And utilizing the Euler's formula, we can derive the general solution as c1 times e to the lambda t cosine of mu t plus c2 e to the lambda t times sine of mu t. Here, our lambda is the real part of the solution and mu is the imaginary part of the solution of the characteristic equation. If you would like to know how this general solution is derived, I can do another video about it, but this time we will directly use this formula. It is derived using Euler's formula of different variant. So let's go ahead and work on the real example. Our first step is to convert our homogeneous equation into characteristic equation. So y double prime will be r squared and 4y prime will be 4r and 7y will be just 7 equal to 0. Now we are going to solve for r in this quadratic function. We are going to utilize quadratic formula. So r1 comma r2 will be equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac all over 2 times a. So this is our general quadratic formula that we're going to apply to solve for the r. So in our case here, our a term is 1, our b term is 4, and our c term is 7 here. a term, b term, and c term. So let's plug in negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7 all over 2 times 1. So we obtain negative 4 plus or minus this is going to be 16 minus 28 all over 2 and if we continue solving this negative 4 plus or minus negative 12 all over 2 and negative 12 goes out as 2 root 3 i so negative 4 plus or minus we can separate the fractions divided by 2 2 root 3 i divided by 2 so here 2's cancel out 4 divided by 2 is 2 so negative 2 plus or minus root 3i. Negative 2 plus or minus root 3i. Now our lambda is negative 2 because lambda is the real part of the roots and root 3 is the mu. Now we can plug this in in our general solution formula. Our general solution is y of t equals to c1 e to the, instead of lambda, we're going to write negative 2 t cosine of, and instead of mu, we're going to use square root of 3. 
plus c2 e to the negative 2t and sine of root 3t. So this is our general solution. Our initial conditions were y of 0 equals to 0 and y prime of 0 equals to 3. Now we are going to plug this in our general solution formula and we need y prime of t and then we are going to plug this in y prime of t. Let's take the derivative of this function. Before we do that, let's try to find the value of c1 by plugging y of 0 equals to 0 because if c1 equals to 0, then we don't need to work on this part. So let's work on y of t. y of t is equal to 0, c1 e to the negative 2 times 0, cosine of square root of 3 times 0. Instead of t, we're plugging in zero. This is our t and this is our y of t plus c2 e to the negative 2 times 0 sine of root 3 times 0. This is going to be 0 and sine of 0 is 0 that destroys this whole terms. This is going to be 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. e to the 0 is 1 and 1 times 1 is 1 so c1 will be equal to 0. From here c1 is equal to 0. So when we take the derivative of y of t we don't need this part. Why? Because since c1 is 0 that's going to make everything 0 when we multiply. So we're going to differentiate only this part. So here we're going to use the product rule. We have two functions here e to the negative t and sine of square root of 3t. Product rule is f prime times g plus f times g prime. And we have c2 constant. Let's take c2 outside. So derivative of e to the negative 2t is negative 2 e to the negative 2t and sine of square root of 3t f prime times g plus f times f is e to the negative 2t g prime. Derivative of sine of square root of 3t is cosine of square root of 3t times root 3. Now we are going to plug in our initial condition y prime of 0 equals to 3. So here our t variable is 0. and our y prime of t is 3. So sine of 0 is 0, so that destroys this whole term here. And cosine of 0 is 1, and e to the 0 is 1 times root 3. And we have c2 here, so we have c2 root 3 c2 equals to 3. So we have root 3 c2 equals to 3. From here, we obtain c2 as 3 over root 3. You can leave it in this form or you can rationalize by multiplying both numerator and denominator by root 3. So you obtain 3 root 3 over 3 because root 3 times root 3 is 3 and 3 cancels out 3. So c2 is equal to root 3. Now you can plug c1 and c2 values into general formula which is c1 times e to the negative 3t this function. Let's do it. So our general solution y of t is equal to c1 times everything will be 0 so we don't need to write that c2 times e to the negative 2t times sine of root 3t. So this is our final answer.